a little bit because I want to put down how I made, but I didn't have enough uh, charters to put in there. Like I said, when you do a stream, when you do a stream, they only give you 60. And uh, I don't know why, but when you when you switch over and you upload it right now, I'm doing it right now, you stream it, they give you the full 100. So anyway, so um, this is how back in the day, first things first, my name is Kenneth Bird. My company is Chris Check Technology Screens. I didn't always develop black technology. Some people don't realize that way, 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 way back, seven years ago, I had a company under Digital One Crystal Screen Paint, and we used to make gray screen paint products. So we're going to go upstairs and check out the um, some of my old videos from back in the day of me making these products. But right now, we do black technology, and there's a reason behind that. Actually, Screen Innovation is responsible for me actually leaning into black technology, which we have here now. Um, so we can show you exactly where I started from and where I'm at now and why we chose to... And I told you that black technology is the future. Anyone making a great product, at the end of the day, it's going to end up making a try to make a black screen because at the end of the day, their product is obsolete. But again, I'll show you how we made ours. All right. So let me go over here. Let's see something real quick to set up. Okay. Let I think some people were really shocked and surprised that when I showed them videos, I was young and much thinner me back then, seven years ago, displaying a company under digital crystal screen paint. Everybody thought I made black screens. I was like, nope, that's how we got started. All right, so we're going to go upstairs and check these out real quick. I'm going to let this continue to play. So as I said before, that coming up, all majority, most screen paints that you found on YouTube were basically black and white base mixtures. That's what they were. Um, you had the YouTube paint, which was actually, I don't know who even developed the YouTube paint, to tell you the truth, to begin with. I don't even started that one, but I know when I was getting into it, um, I sold my uh, sold my screens, my uh, two uh, TV screens. At the time, I was doing computers, and I had a two TV screen set up. And I uh, went over to a friend's house, and over there they had he had a Gray Wolf screen at 120 inches. I was blown away. I really thought that that mass of 100, um, the mass of 42 inches. Side by side, Sony's were freaking remarkable. But watching them play Gears of War on a 120 inch screen, I had nothing to match it. So, me and him got to talking to my buddy June. We got to talking. And he was like, Look, you know, this is a projector. He's playing all this stuff to me. Because last time I saw a projector, it was pretty much. Um, it was pretty much BMC and VGA. It was that. That's what it was. So projectors at that time, Ronco, Ronco, Magnavox. I'll show you how far I go back. Ronco, Magnavox. They were like old, old projectors. So I didn't even think projectors had the peripherals for running freaking graphic cards and HDMI and all this stuff. So going over to his house and looking at these, um, this setup he had, he's the one that actually got me started in this, you know, you know, just teaching me because every time I would go by and say, Hey, what is lumens? What is this? What is that? He was the one that was teaching me all this. All right, so let's go over here to uh, my page here. And here, I'm gonna go take out some things up real quick because I want to add something into my caption, but I couldn't add it in there. And like I said, they only give you so many letters. There we go. Come back in here, and I wanted to put in, in this one. If you hear a lot of noise, that's my cat in the next room fighting his toys. And I'm going to put in how. I made my first screen paint. All right, for a digital one crystal screen paint, yeah. 
So yeah, this was a uh, screen paint store I first called my company under Digital One Crystal Screen Paint. Paint. Oh, screen. I put screen there instead. It's not spelled that way. All right, so I am going to remove this right here because I know from the door we're going to get the haters in here. Keep in mind, this was my product that I made years ago. So well, you can say whatever you want. I have timestamp videos back in my products. All right, we'll save this right here so we're good on this one. Some else working on this today. All right, that's going to be saved. I don't know why. Freaking, where's my phone? It's bugging me with all this. We don't need all that. We're done. They want, I don't know. Come on, dude. Enough with that. Can we get this out of my way, please? Why are you even here? Why are you bugging me with all this? I don't need this here. I don't need you bugging me with this. All right, thank you. All right. So, let me go in here, too, and take care of this one, too. Move this real quick. I'll take that out there. All right. So, all I have to do is, is go into my search engine here under Crystal Edge Technology Screens and just put in uh, Digital One Crystal Screen Paint. D-R-G-R. -G -R, Digital One. Uh, crystal. Oops, all W's in there. That's what's me. Screen P A I N T. All right. Under this, you will see my first video. That's not my first one. This is actually one of the demonstrations I did way back in the day, right here, making a gray screen paint product. If you look at the date on it, the date says November the thirtieth, twenty twelve, which would make it eight years ago. This is me painting in a screen. I'll put the links below. As a matter of fact, I'll put those links in right now. That's me painting a gray screen paint product. Not black, gray. All right, so we're gonna take this link right here, right there, I wanna take that, copy that, put that over here for copy, take this over to the demonstration over here. Um, this one right here, how? No, this is the other one, so let me do this one already. Let's come out of here and let's go into this one and it's put in uh, at the bottom of there. It's first link right there. There you go. That's your first link. Let's come over here. Yeah, because a lot of people thought, oh, no, he only made black. No, 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 no. How do you think we got started? There was no such thing as black screen paint that far back. It didn't even exist. That'd be virtually impossible. All right, here's another one right here. Digital crystal screen paint, easy and fast. Another one I did here for a demonstration. Yeah, it'd be virtually impossible for me to ever make a black screen because they did not exist at that particular time. I don't think Black Diamond was even around. The biggest screen on the market at that time was Grey Wolf. You know what a Grey Wolf is? If you don't know what a Grey Wolf is, you weren't around at that time to know what Grey Wolves were. I know you know what Goose Screens are. Goose Screens were the big top sellers. They were the big dogs in screen paints. And goose screen was quite expensive and very tedious to put in. If you've never done a goose screen before, you don't know the horror of putting one in. I don't know if they changed it now, but when I was putting one in, it took some time. It took some time. And I had to. You had to test out to see exactly, like I test out when I go to um, uh, all different forms of, uh, of uh, sample sheets to test out whether these screens have poor angle gain or uh, basically how they pick up contrast or they got that kind of weird kind of coating to make the screens reflect more light. That's stuff I have to find out. So if I'm going to do Goose Screen and be their competition, I am going to have to try their product. And it was something that I didn't like at all. So I didn't want my customers to go through that. So that's why we developed a screen paint that was fast and easy to apply. And this is where I go is on ABS forms. And this is where I had issues with a guy called Mississippi Man. Yeah, I know all that stuff. Trust me. I got all those a mile, the records a mile long. Here's another demonstration right here. This is our 2.0 screen paint right there. There's me again, painting in another screen. Voila, right there, boom. Yeah, I was doing this a long time ago. What's the time sta stamped on this one? 2012, that would make it eight years ago. So when I tell you that I was developing great gray screen paints way before any of you guys ever knew I ever exist and I ever knew you ever exist, wasn't joking with you. I can tell all myself is time stamped. Anything you do on YouTube, any video on YouTube is going to be time stamped. There we go. We'll put that one right there. 
All right, let's go back to the other video right here. Let's go back here and get another one. Now I'm gonna show you what happens with the glitter effect. Now the glitter effect is quite interesting. If you put too much glitter into it, look at this. Uh, screens, invisible technology, right there. Look at the date on it, seven years ago. We developed that stuff seven years ago. What we did was if you develop, we first made it seven years ago, we keep advancing on the technology to make it better. It takes years to be able to perfect it. That's why when we saw the demonstration with the black screen, it wasn't black, it was gray. Because it takes years to perfect one of those screens. Years. All right, let me see what else we got here. Um, let me see. This was, uh, what was this screen right here? This was the, uh, oh, look at the color of the screen. Look at the color of it. Look at the year on it, four years ago. Kind of dark, ain't it? Yeah, kind of, that was, that was an actual screen paint right there. Here's another demonstration we did where we had our friend walk in front of a screen with clothes on, had him camouflage in front of the screen. That was nine years ago. Let me see if we got any other ones we have here. Um, let me see. And look, still hasn't learned. Still doing dumb stuff. Okay, let's keep on going. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me see what we got here. Oh, here's a demonstration that we did two years ago showing our product versus black paint right there. But let's keep going. Again, I'm going to explain something to Jamie. You do not own the rights to gray screen paints. You do not. I was making products way before you ever existed. Uh, this is a demonstration done on, oh, I'm going to show you the glitter effect. You'll see it. So at then, like I said, when you're talking about seven years ago, eight years ago, this was acceptable. Now, not acceptable. So we'll come here. Already warned you, buddy, on that lawsuit. I'm telling you, I'm not playing with you. you Mess around, get your clock clean. You better get your act together. So I know that whatever happened between him and Partey, Partey confessed a lot of stuff to us in that email. Yeah, we know. We know he got. We know he got the letter. We know he got the letter. We know he got it. We know where he lives at. We know where he works at. We know he got it. But you better keep your nose clean. Like I said, I'll have no mercy for you in court. Yeah, I don't care about your family or nothing. I'll sue. I'll take everything. Don't play with me. I'm giving you an opportunity. You mess up on this opportunity, I don't care about your family or anything. I'm gonna wipe you clean with nothing. At the end of the day, you will be homeless. So I'm telling you, you may want to act right. Stay out of trouble. That might put a strain on your marriage. You might you might end up getting a divorce after this. You better chill with this nonsense. How oh, I made my first screen paint. You do not own the rights to great screen paints. All right, so let's come over here and let's look this up. Thank you for the main customer right here. Let me see. Um, let me see what we got going on with this. All right, so this is the other one right here. Let's go back to this one. This is where we're this is the glitter effect. So it ha if you put too much glitter in, you will get a Christmas tree effect. Now this is, like I said, at that particular time now, but before it was acceptable, now it's not acceptable. No one wants a tree like a Christmas tree. You can get up close on this screen. Make sure you, there you go. See that right there? See that heavy glitter effect right there in the screen? Now at that particular time, this was acceptable. Way back, I think, when was that video done? Hold on for a minute, let me show you the glitter effect. That's the glitter effect right there. If you put too much glitter in your screen, this is how it triggers off. But at that particular time, around seven years ago, this was considered to be advancements. That heavy content, glitter content, that was considered to be an advancement in the screen. Mine, seven years ago. Now, not acceptable at all. Your screen should be shown up virtually invisible with no glitter content in it whatsoever. Now, you can put some in there. You just have to put a little bit in there, like a pinch. But like I said, this is how it was. So I'm going to put this down here so you can see right there. The heavy glitter content right there. So you know what not to do. And keep in mind, like I said, at that particular time, it was very popular. All right, so let's come over here. Let's take this video and put it over here. So now you can see that I can go back and I can show you. 
my products way back seven years ago, time stamped, showing off my product that I used to make before I got into dark screens. Let's put underneath this one. Um, we'll put uh, digital one. No, it's a screen bird. Screen paint. Uh, paint on demonstrations. I hope I got spelled that right. I just butchered that real bad. And as demonstrations, bring this up a little bit more right here. And at the bottom, we're going to put the ingredients on how we made our product. So this is how our product was made. At that particular time, like I said, we had Martha Stewart um, Metallica Collections, but she doesn't exist anymore. So this is what we were putting into it. We were putting into, see if we can bring it up when it comes up. Martha Stewart Metallica Collections. Let me see. Okay. Metallica Collection paints so let me show you what we had if I can find somebody who's displaying one they came in a container like this now they've removed the label now because you can't put it up there because she basically pulled out from Home Depot but you used to be to buy them at Home Depot but not anymore. But she does make these right here. These were the sample bottles right here, the sample bottles. Martha Stewart Arts and Crafts. You can get them right over at Amazon now, but this is the bottles they used to come in. They used to look just like this in a container, just like this. I used to have one of the old containers, but I don't know what I did with it. But that's how they came in. They were at Home Depot. So we go back over to all used to be over at Complete Collection. They used to be at Home Depot, Amazon. I don't want to think to have remembered they had them at Home Depot. Here we go, right here. I don't think they still have those there. But now it's called, when you go look on it, it's now it's PPJ. So if you go back here from the very first beginning, this is where you'll see it come up where it says Martha Stewart. Metallica paints at Home Depot. They used to be at Home Depot. What happened was something happened with the contract and they got replaced with PPJ. So when you click on that for the Martha Stewart, you'll notice when you go over to Home Depot, it's now replaced by the PPG, uh, sorry, PPG, not PPJ, my fault. PPG, that's what it's replaced by now. Because what happened, something happened with the contract with Martha Stewart and Home Depot and that's what happened, it got replaced it got restored somehow, sometimes some contract disagreement or whatever, and it got replaced by a company called PPG. I think PPJ, PPG. And like I said, I told you, a gallon of that is going to cost you around $54. All right, so um, let me see. Because when we we're, oh, here are, here's a container that's right here. Perfect example. So this is what the containers look like. There you go. That's the Martha Stewart containers. This is how they looked. So when I was making it at the time, um, they told me that uh, when I went to go pick up my paints, my stuff for my orders, they told me that um, the Martha Stewart uh, product uh, was no longer being sold at Home Depot. I'm like, shoot, because I need that for my ingredients. But they told me that another company was coming out by the name uh, PPG. I got it, PPJ, PPG. And PPG, their paint was a gallon at around 40, 49 or 48. They're 54, but at the time it was like 48. When they're 50 bucks, that's what they were. So um, this was a lot more money I would save because I can get a gallon of that. I have plenty of paint and so on and so forth. Instead of buying one of these every time I got an order that came in, and they were something like uh, almost close to like $30. All right, so let's go downstairs and let's make the paint. So now that you know the history of all that, in focus. Oh yeah, I shut that off. I gotta turn that in focus off. We're done with that. 
Now the reason why I'm showing you all this is because a couple of days ago we made a product that was made out of black and white paint. I told you in the day that product was nothing more than a black and white mixture. And I told you that back in the day when we made screen paint products, we used the same base. Everybody was using the same base. The YouTube paint was the same base. There were a couple other people that were making the same base. Every tutorial video on YouTube at that particular time and era when people were sharing information because we were selling all this. But those people, some people were selling, some people were sharing. But at that particular time, every form of mix that was made at that particular time was done with that black and white base. I don't know, some people put more, some people put less, some people put glitter in, some people put silver in, everybody had their own thing. The only thing was when we were doing it, we were doing our demonstrations in fully lit environments, everybody was following Goose Screen at that particular time, so they were following under their rules. What Goose Screen had, we had to sand a wall down, and you had to go through this process and that process. When we came on, we did the opposite. We had lights on the environment, not a lot of light, but light in the environment. And we were doing demonstrations on marked up walls and stuff like that. Something that you were not able to do with the other paints. But everybody wanted that popularity like Goose Screen. They wanted to do the demonstrations with the sanded down walls and all that other nonsense that went along with it. I'm going to save this right here. So we got that right there. So right there you can automatically go in right away and look at those demonstrations. Um, so as I said before, at that particular time, that's how they were doing it. So if you go over here, let me see what test we're doing over here. These are all the demonstrations under Digital One Crystal Screen Paint. As a matter of fact, we had one called Digital Crystal Screen Silver Paint with some silver screen paint we're developing right here. This is the website we were displaying around eight years ago. So these are all the demonstrations you can see. Keyword would be Digital One. I should have put keyword. should be Digital One Crystal Screen Paint. Where is that? Okay, I'm going to find. Okay, put this right here. So you can see, you can see the beta testers will pop up and everything else. All right. Let's see. To find more video demonstrations on oops, on our gray screen paint. Uh, um, keyword uh, keyword uh, let's look down here keyword keyword slash keyword eh get that out of there slash uh, digital digital one crystal screen paint. All right, so that's what you would put in for keyword. If you were to look up uh, any more of our demonstrations, that would pop up over there, and you would be able to see uh, the rest of our demonstrations or any of our demonstrations we did. It was quite a lot of them. You'll be able to see the beta tester demonstrations. They'll pop up. You'll see everything will pop up. All right, so I'm going to save that right there. Then I go in. Take this out real quick. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, took all that out. That's gone. All right. So also, too, I want to go over here and I want to pull up um, Facebook. So keep in mind, I think you need a Facebook account to come in here and check this out. I don't know how it's going to set up for you. Let's just sign. Let's see. Uh, Facebook. Digital and Crystal Screen. So that would pop up right there on the Facebook, on the Digital and Crystal Screen. Let's see which one pops up. It's the one for Europe. There it is, right there for Europe. This is where we had the six. We had a ten-year contract with the company overseas. Right there. Ten-year product. This is right here. We were showing. They were. This, these are our business partners that we had under Digital One Crystal Screen Paint. These are our video demonstrations. There's our screen on display, as you can see right there. This is the contract we had overseas. There's our screen on display right there. The difference between 
what we made back then is we got notified. We got we got we got popularity for it because we were doing demonstrations with that light in the environment. When everybody was doing pitch black dark environments, we were the only ones going out there. Because like I said, there was a lot of gray screen paint on the market. You had to be to tell that how are you different from everybody else? So in our demonstrations, we could come and paint a screen on in no time at all. We were painting over marked up walls, walls that had little ridges in it, and this was not possible under goose screen standard, but everybody wanted to be like goose screen. We did the opposite, and this is what landed us a contract. This guy called me up. I was living over in North Philadelphia on Cambria Street, and this guy calls me up, and he goes, hey, look, we've been watching your demonstrations. We like the fact we can have light in the environment. We like how fast you can paint the screen. We used to use goose screen, yes, and all the demonstrations they were watching, everybody was in the dark. We were the only ones that were in the dark, and that's how we got a 10-year contract with this company. Now, this is right around the time where we started having some problems with them. I told you I learned things about in my past about adding signature colors to our products to be to tell what's what. We had issues, a lot of issues that were popping up with these, um, these demonstrations. Number one, this right here is a fake demonstration. You know why? Because one of the things I'm a stickler about is using my own pictures. Anytime you go to my website, it'll be my own pictures or my customers' pictures. But I'm a real stickler about photoshopping someone taking an image let me go check on my cat for doing something stupid what are you doing and where are you at stay out of there good gracious got a nice big woman there and he's got to tear something up every time so what where the argument started was this particular picture right here because in this particular picture right here if you click on the image, you go through a Google search image. This is how you know if someone's Photoshopping their images. Go to your back to your browser. You'll see something that says Google search the image. Now, if you Google search the image on any of my images, well, it's, it's at my house. Again, I do the videos at my house. The pictures are at my house. But if you do the Google search image and you hit on here, where is that image coming at? Google will show you where the image is coming at and actually who owns the image. And this is where the images were popping up at. Oops, sorry about that. It's not me locking my standing correctly. But there's the image right there. Not owned by them. That's not my screen paint being displayed. And this is where they were getting visual similar images from to add it to, to make our screen paint look like something that is not. And I don't tolerate that nonsense. That's when we started getting to having arguments left and right. So I was like, what is up with this image? How come it doesn't match our paint? This is not my paint. It's not coming up. It's coming under other people's names here and there of other people that use it. There's a place you can go to and get images to basically make your website look good. Fake demonstrations. This is what triggered off the arguments. So in this nonsense, since we busted them and caught them, caught them doing this nonsense, this was an automatic breach of contract right from the door. And then that's where it started. So we started taking off. We, we started de uh, deleting videos left and right because, you know, these videos were deleting certain videos that we knew had access to the website. We was marking them private so they couldn't use them. And then right around that time, we were locked into a 10-year contract with them, which means in that 10 years contract, I would still be making screen paint for them. You know, I mean, you know, almost near almost 10 years. Yeah, I would pretty much. So in order to get rid of them, because in their mind, this is why I tell people over and over again, and I explained this to companies, I couldn't explain this enough. When companies sit there and you get our screen paint products, you think for a minute that that is the only screen paint we can develop and make. You think you actually had our only product. We can obsolete our products so fast and redevelop something completely new that we can wipe out the very thing that you own that quick, that fast. Within hours, I can do that. I replaced an entire product line of Nova 17, just like that, sold that off to another company and developed the Phoenix technology. Phoenix technology, within, within what, a couple of months? No, less than a month, a week, developed Phantom technology. And now we have technology we're working on that's more advanced than Phantom. So I explained to them in these conversations we have, I said, look, we can obsolete your stuff. And I tell the exact same story in every meeting. Why do you fight over the breadcrumbs under the table when there's a four course meal over top of you? Meaning you're fighting over these little scraps when all the technology that we could develop for you, not to choke a horse, is sitting right over top of you, but you're so worried about these little crumbs. 
And that fast, we can come in and obsolete your stuff. And that's what happened. We came in and developed the, right around, this is right around the time where Black Diamond came into effect. And I got the sample sheet. And that's when I woke up and I saw how Black Technology was it. And this is where the company popped up under Digital 4K Crystal Onyx. This is not on our contract. Completely different company, which we had a guy named uh, David, which has a name 708 or 708. I think he's one of the beta testers. And the other one was Tom Monacreef, I think his name was. Tom Monacreef. There were our two beta testers that were doing demonstrations for us. We got one right there. It's one of the beta testers, which goes by the name Stone 708. And the other one at the top was, well, he, he went by the name of Superman, but his name was Tom Monacreef. I think that's what his name was. So anyway, we developed this black screen paint. We had him do demonstrations against the old digital and crystal screen paint. And the black screen paint became popular because it was a black screen. And it sold like crazy. And by doing that, and by the beta testers doing the demonstrations back and forth, showing you don't want to go with great products, this is way back against their own stuff. You don't want to go with great products. You want to deal with this black technology. Their popularity dropped. Their contracts dropped. Everything dropped. Everything stalled because now they wanted the new stuff, the latest stuff from us, not from them. And when they tried to take us to court saying that we basically breached their contract, I said, no, we actually didn't breach your contract because in that contract, it doesn't say anything about me developing anything that I want to develop. You don't own the rights to me. You own the rights to Digital One Crystal Screen Paint, not Kenneth Bird. So Kenneth Burr can go and make anything he wants. You don't make, you don't own me. And that's how we were able to get out of the contract. So every time I signed a contract, I don't sign it under Kenneth Bird. I sign it under the company. Because that means at the end of the day, that gives me the freedom to design anything that I want. And if I decide I want to opt out of a contract because we're having problems, I can do that. So you got to be smart. You got to be smart in business. You have to be. When you're dealing with people like this. So yeah, they don't own the rights to under Digital One Crystal Onyx, which means now I continue to make this black paint. We don't make this anymore. And we started posting, discontinue, 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 discontinue. We don't support it anymore. It's old technology. And they lost everything. That's what happens when you, when you do dumb stuff. They thought I was stupid. No, I'm not stupid. I wasn't born yesterday. So keep in mind, when you're talking about people like you know who and their apartment thinking, no, I've dealt with companies and corporations. That's what I dealt with. I've been in court with lawsuits. I've been in court for this. I've been in court for that. And I've won everything because number one, I can back everything up. And number two, I'm very smart on how I do business. That's the difference between me and him. So these are the people that we were dealing with. I don't know what to do with all the buttons are, but I don't know. So yeah, and they were ticked over it. But like I said, I can show that this is not our, this is not our paint. That's not our paint. Again, when I went in, I hit the Google. Go back and hit where it says search in image. If it doesn't pop up under my name, it's not mine. And this is where you got the arguments. I said, no, because this is false advertisement, man. You're selling them something that's not real. You know what I mean? This is not our stuff. And so we sometimes you got a little lie, a little bit in business. No, but we don't do that. And yeah, that's where we had problems. That's how that's what triggered the entire argument. Because of that. Because they want to do dirty stuff. Because if you're going to do that, then what's next? What's gonna be next? Nah, we're good. And keep in mind, at that particular time, we had a paint that was kind of a, like a dark gray. It wasn't black. It was a dark gray. And at that particular time, that was considered to be black. As I said before, at this particular time, seven years ago, that was considered to be a black paint, which was a dark gray. Now, because you got black screens out there, you got the um, you got really dark, dark gray screens. Now they call them gunmetals, and they call the black screens actually black. But yeah, this is the whole history on it. Not, like before, I be like I said, anytime I'm gonna come in here and show you something, I'm always going to back it up. Always. You go into there, you type in the keyword digital crystal screen paint, you will see all my old videos back in the day when I started off with gray screen paint products before I was ever doing black screens. Ever. You will see all the old videos from back in the day. We even had a 3D paint we developed. We had 3D technology nine years ago. We had it already. So that's where all that chaos started from. Going into, no, they took me to court. Yeah, they took me to court over this mess. And they were trying to say that they owned the rights to me. I was like, oh, freak, no, you don't own the rights to me. No, 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 because you made that. And because it's under you, it belongs to us. So we should get, you can get access to Jack. We go to court then. And that's what happened, we ended up going to court and they lost. 
So we're gonna take this right here. If you have a Facebook account, because you're only gonna be to get access to it via Facebook, you can go check this out for yourself. I'm gonna put this in the link right over here at the bottom, right over there. This is where I'm building the link set right here. This is all the screen paints. These are my screen paint demonstrations. This is the keyword, keyword, digital one crystal screen paint. Type that in, you get the whole thing. Beta test this whole nine yards. I'm gonna put here the contract. We got overseas, our contract, our 10 year contract overseas. Now, yeah, they paid up front. They came in. The guy called me up and he said, look, man, um, we like what you have. Um, if you want, you know I mean? I can pull this trigger today and this could happen. We'll come down there a week from now. We'll bring you down a contract to look over. It brought this contract down. It was like that freaking thick. A friend of mine was an attorney. I was like, can you read through this, please? Because at the time, I couldn't pay for an attorney. Like I said, I was living in a little bedroom. I was just starting off. I said, can you read through this for me? I don't understand nothing in this. And yeah, he read through. He said, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. You're good. Contract's good. So went back and signed it. And they said, okay, here's $3,200. We only need about $200 for paint. Keep the rest. What do you want to do with it? So I basically did the $200 order from the sample. Then they came back in. They ordered another 80 gallons. And I couldn't complete that in that small little room. So what I did was I, my buddy June and TK, he, TK had a garage. So I basically gave him $800 to rent out the garage and gave them both like two grand a piece. So we can all go in there and make this product for him. So somebody at the box back, it was a crazy man. It was crazy. Up all night, filling these containers of paint, different paints, they had different paints we had. It was crazy. It was crazy, but it was fun. But it was a good experience, but also too, on the other end of business, it was a very scary experience because the whole entire time, little by little by little, they were taking over, trying to take over my company. Like they were saying things like, okay, if we, um, if when we're selling on our site, they had their own website. When we're selling our site, we need you to shut down your site. So we need you to shut down your site. And here's the thing. When we get orders that come in, we will give you some of this money to process these orders. At that particular time, he wasn't giving us anything at all, period. And all my orders were dwindling. Like, they were going to them. They were making all the money. I was making nothing. This is another thing that triggered me. This is what I learned, something I learned in business, too. A few things I learned in business. When I saw this right here, not this. Where's that other thing? It might pop up at a show. They had some kind of party. Fake them. It's fake. That's a fake picture right there. Another one, fake picture. That's a fake picture. That's a fake picture right there. There's no way in the world of stuff that we we're developing would ever pull an image up like that. It will wash out. You'll see because we're making it today. That's a fake image right there. That's another fake image. That's the real one right there. That's our screen paint right there. That's our product. They had this huge conference where they had our product at. They had all these investors coming in. These are all the investors popping in right there for our screen paint. Now imagine you're you're in a little tiny rented room and you're watching your stuff with all these people and crowds watching your stuff. Yeah, you know, but you got to be smart about it, man. You got to be smart about it. See how they were changing the name slowly? Digital Crystal, Digital One Crystal Europe. They were changing it slowly. This is uh, uh, Tom Monacre. This is him showing our paint outside in the back. That's fake. That's not real. That's photo right there. They put in the digital one crystal screen paint and they told me that, okay, look, we need to change the logo because we need to add a more of a European style to it. And I agreed on that like an idiot. And they were slowly changing my company. So when I was losing these orders, massive orders are coming, losing all this money. And I saw this right here. Never told me that they had this big banquet and party and they're passing on champagne. None of that stuff. Didn't tell me a thing at all. And that, boom, that triggered it. That's what triggered us. Okay, so you want to play? We'll play. And that's when I started developing the, um, right around that time, I was trying to make a better gray screen paint, like a better version, but they had everything we had. And that's where I saw when June said, hey, I got something down here you might want to check out because I was researching Black Diamond technology. And at the time, June was like, I got something for you you want to check out. You want to take it to the house. And that's when I put that sample sheet up there and my head just went, boof. That was it. They couldn't stop me after that. And they do contact me. For once in a blue moon, I get, I get emails from them. I was so ticked off. I banned the entire country for life. Nobody in that country could ever buy from me, not ever. And any contract that I sign, anybody who sells in that country will basically be automatically terminated from a contract with a couple million dollar fine stacked on top of it. What well, I mean, permanent, permanent. Any contract we sign by anybody, you cannot sell to that country at all. Not ever.
because we want to make sure they can never get their hands on it. And that's what happened. I also got people that are contacting me to this day and we deny their orders. But yeah, this whole nonsense, you got to be careful what you do in business. Because like I said, people will sit there, smile on your face, tell you that, yeah, we're going to do this and do that for you and then take from you. And they wanted me to go in and remove my prices because they didn't want the customer, them to see how cheap my prices were considered how much money they were making off my product. They're making a lot of money off my product. Yep, fix that nonsense all together. And that's where we came out with the Digital Crystal Onyx. And that's where they got to the whole argument. They had keychains, all this stuff made up. Look at, look, at the, look at the meetings they were having. Kept me out of the loop on everything. And this is when I found out at the last minute. By the time the last minute, it was too late. So, like I said, obsolete their stuff. That's why I explained to people, don't do not do that. Don't think that you got my best. Nah, I can obsolete anything I want and basically rebuild it from the ground up. I got tech technology downstairs that you won't see a year from now. That's far more advanced than what I'm showing you right now. Always, always have backups. And anytime I develop a formula, I've always learned that never give them the same identity, never. Because if you sell one, and if you sell one of your products, at, when you sign that contract, and that contract says that you can't ever make that ingredients ever again, or they get sued the living daylights out of you. You already sold the rights to it. So you can't sell it. So you have to make sure they're all different. Let me show you right here. We'll go under right here. Let's go under uh, this one real quick. We first started with digital one. No, digital 4K crystal on it. Digital 4K crystal onyx. Yeah, it's right around we met Black Diamond right around that time. There you go. Now you type that into a search engine, you'll see my second company pop up. This is when we're developing black technology. This was around uh, six years ago. Digital 4K Crystal Onyx. That's us. This is our black technology from six years ago. This is the beta tester that was displaying our technology. That's one of the screen demonstrations that I did on this technology. There it is right there. So you think you're seeing new black technology from me now? I told you I've been developing it. I've been doing this stuff for years. This is nothing for years. That's a black screen right there. And keep in mind, Jamie didn't exist. Didn't exist. Parte didn't exist. Half of you crow boys, well, none of you crow boys existed. You didn't even know I even, you didn't even know I wasn't even on the radar. Didn't know that I've been to court. Didn't know I had a 10 year contract. Didn't know my technology was sitting up in Europe being on display. Hey, I didn't know that. Yeah, I told you my history goes way back. The projector we were using in there was 2,000 or 2,000 lumens. Look at that. Do you have any idea how much my product sold at that time? At that particular time, that technology was unheard of. My product sold for $900 a quart, and I was selling about maybe about nine or 10 a week. That's how much money literally I was making. That's, what pulled, that's why I left that place, because I didn't realize how much money I was literally making. I was so used to getting this certain amount of money every month, because I told you I was on welfare every month. Didn't realize how much money I was making until basically I had these shoe boxes that I would have on top of my um on top of my um in my closet and shoe people I live with were real nice people they would never steal from me. they were cool people and I was just throwing money in these boxes but it never really dawned on me. So here I am waiting for my food stamp card to come in and I said well I'm gonna take some of this money down because I didn't think about it. I was I'm used to I was used to being a trained a certain set of mind of getting money every month. And I said I'm just gonna take one of these boxes down and just buy me a cheesesteak, you know. I looked, I didn't realize how much money I was throwing in there. I went to open that box, man. That box was stacked. All three of them were stacked. 
didn't realize. So my friend's like, you don't have any idea how much money you're literally making right now. Like you can rent a house right now if you wanted to. You can leave that little room and rent a house. And I thought about it, I was like, hmm, yeah, I can. And that's when I left. Went and rented to me the first house. Didn't like, got like that one. It got too small. Got me another house, rented that one out. Got me another house, rented that one out. And then I moved over here and I got this big house over here. And now I'm buying this one. Yeah, didn't realize at that point because I was never used to having that kind of money. But this is where I started from. All the way from gray screen paint products all the way to here. This is our first started off. And still, that technology is pretty good, but nothing like the advancements we have now. Not even close to what we design now. Would I ever tell you what's in that? No, not in a million years. Not in one million years, never. That's going to my grave. You would never know what's in that. Look, at these are all the beta testers, beta testers, beta testers, beta testers, beta testers, yeah. Our product's supposed to come up so dark you can't see it, but yet I got beta testers dropping back from six years back on a black technology that's pulling up insane white levels. Mm-hmm. And keep in mind, this is old technology. We don't even make this stuff anymore because the stuff we have is far more advanced. So next time somebody starts running their mouth about how black screens do this and that, I was doing this before you even knew I exist, before I even knew that you ever exist. Before the Crow Boys ever existed, I was there making black technology, making great, great screen paints. <coughs> Goes on and on and on. Beta Test was putting out tons of demonstrations on our products. Keyword I will put up there is Digital 4K Crystal Onyx. Beta test. We'll put that into the link below. Add that in there if you ever want to look that up and look at my history, where I came from. So before you come into my channel, running your mouth about this, that, and the other, like I said, I was I was here way before you ever existed, ever knew who I was. Let me see, we want to put keyword, keyword here, keyword, um, put keyword at the bottom here. When I sit there and tell you how far my experience level, my skill level goes back, it goes back quite, quite long. I can tell you when I look at demonstrations, I tell you that, oh, that's all right, and this all right. You may want to trust what I'm saying because every time I tell you all this, it comes true. Every time, every single time. When I was looking at the screen, I told y'all the screen wasn't black. The screen looked weird. I told y'all. So let me see what we got coming up here. We're going to put in keyword here. Slash keyword right there. And I'll tell you what's in gray screen paint. I, please. I had contracts under my company. I'm gonna save that right there for you. There you go, go grab that too. Let's go back over here. There's my product right there. So how's the screen coming up black that I show you in demonstrations, me walking through my entire house live, showing you these demonstrations are coming up black. And this technology is far more advanced than what we had six years ago. But this is demonstration videos being shown way back six years ago, showing our technology on display. See, it's easy to catch people who lie. See, there you go. I'm gonna start displaying some of these on the website. Our pass, put up our pass. Black curved screen, been there, done that. I wonder if I got my labels for this thing up here. My labels. I had customized labels designed for this too. D5K, this is the screen we actually went toe to toe with um, uh, um, Screen Innovation with. 
right here. You remember the light demonstrations with lights in front of the screens and all that? We started that. See right here in the date right here? Six years ago, I was doing those demonstrations but put lights and lamps in front of the screens. We were doing it first before other people started copying off of us. We're the ones who started it. There you go, right there. We started that six years ago, and everybody else is doing it, wants to do it like we did. Y'all copy us. We don't copy y'all. Y'all copy what we do. Y'all go back to our old demonstrations, watch our demonstrations, and y'all copy us. We don't copy y'all. Look at this. You ever heard of an out curve screen? We developed that technology. A screen that actually does not bend inward, but outwards. The coding on that allows the screen to maintain a solid image from one end to the next, even though the screen is expanded. We developed it. Yeah, we made it first. Those wallpaper screens that LG has, yeah, we had those demonstrations too. Did all that. Invisible technology, we developed it first. We've had it perfected back then. Look at this, another black screen, Crystal Onyx black screen. So this is right around the time, like I said, that we had the incident, we had to develop a new company due to the fact um, that uh, we had issues and we had to get out of the contract. There's no way in the world I was going to be stuck in a contract for 10 years with these people knowing that they were stealing from me. So we had to get out of it and that's how we got out. We actually re-engineered, I re-engineered my technology, destroyed one of my companies to build another one just to get out of a contract from people that were cheating me. Testing black screen versus gray screens. We was doing that five years ago. Nothing new. All right, let's go downstairs and make this gray screen paint. Get this thing done over because I got a lot to do today. We're silver. We're going to do silver. That's not silver, it's a digital crystal screen paint. So let's make this. So now I have to go and see, like I said, I'll show you my history right there, where I started from, where it all began. Break it down for you so that we won't have anybody saying, oh, you, you took the idea from me. No, 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 you took it from me. That's where you took it from. All my stuff is time stamped. And those demonstrations you've never even seen before. Didn't know that that black technology I was displaying six years ago, how is it possible that I can walk through my house, display all my screens, environments, and levels that you can't even begin to even start from? Keep in mind, you failed miserably on that whole challenge I gave you by bringing up a dark gray screen, not a black screen. So that's failed, already done. Just like Cookie Cutter had his chance, you had your chance, done. That's it. You can't get no reduce after that. Now I don't get reduce. You got one time to get it right and you fail. So how can you go talk about my technology that I have now that you didn't know that six years ago, way back, that I was developing black technology under Crystal, uh, Crystal 4K Crystal Onyx? What do you got to say about that? Oh, you can't say anything about that because you didn't even know I existed. That's why. You know nothing. That's why I said at the end of the day, you know nothing. Your gray screen paint products was making that years ago, many, many years ago. So I know all the flaws of it. I know how limitations it has. I know what it can do and what it can't do. I know this already. That's how it was so easy for me to come on camera and make products. Now today, we're going to make digital one crystal screen paint. I told you, we made this product. Got to have a little silver. You got to have some black. You got to have some white paint. And you got to have a little glitter. Just not too much, just a little bit. I learned that. Well, actually, like I said, we did that screen with all. You'll see when you watch if you watch those tutorials. So all screen paint products in that particular era were made by the same base. They're all made the same way. White paint, black paint. That's your base. This is your toner. This right here. People add a little silver because they think the silver is going to change it, but it really doesn't. It just gets diluted in with all this and that. And the only one you're going to see is that. 
All right, so let's get cracking, Jackson. So what we're going to do is we're going to make digital Christmas candy. Now I said I kept word we're not going to make your products anymore. We don't need them. We make we had our products way before you ever existed. All right, I'm making digital crystal screen paint, so don't get all high horse, don't get upset to my, he's making my product. No, 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 buddy, I'm not making your product. You don't own the rights to all gray screen paints. Like, I don't own the rights to all black screens. I don't own that. If somebody develop, develop ones next week, that's their thing. If they develop, that's their thing. There you go. I just have to show that mine is different from all of theirs. There you go. That's why I can come on here and show you black paint and this paint next to each other. Right next to it, both showing the exact same color, matching. But when my screen dries, it dries differently, and my screen displays higher white levels. You gotta show a difference. All right, people, so let's get started on this. White paint, we're not even measuring jack, because you really don't have to. It all comes out the same way. You couldn't basically mess this up if you wanted to. You could do this with your eyes closed. Let's stare this up right here. Got a white paint here. All right, because he'll take it as a personal tack toward him, thinking he owns the rights to everything. All right, put that in there like so. We're only making a little bit, so we need a lot. Remember, this right here is how much paint you're going to make. That's all this does. It's how much paint you're going to make. That's what the white's for, how much paint you're going to make. So when people do this, they always start off with a gallon because they don't know how much you're going to make. You wouldn't start off with a quart. That should be just going to make 120-inch screen. All right, we've got our black right here. Doesn't make a difference. You put this one or this one, doesn't make a difference at all. So the black and this one, we're going to use six. That's it. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's it. Now, when I tell you that the silver doesn't make any difference, let's stare this up. Do, 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 do. We got the screen already painted over. So keep in mind, Jamie, we're going to paint over your screen. So we're not using your screens anymore. We don't need them. We're going to use our own Digital One Crystal screen paint that we made back in the day. That's all we're going to use. So when I told you I was going to leave your product alone, I kept my word. As long as you keep your mouth shut, you mind your own business, stay in your own backyard, you don't have you might not have to worry about a lawsuit on top of that so you just keep your mouth shut mind your own business anytime you see me display a great gray screen you remember i made this product first so that's how i know they all start off the same way every last one of them start off the same way there was a fellow who came he did a really nice screen oh my screen is pretty cool um he did a great same thing gray and white mix gray and black mix right no matter what you put in it's always going to look the same now, mind you, when we made his paint, uh, the ones we had here, we made one with four, we made one with ten, and we made another one, which was the reverse, which was actually the black, into five tablespoons of white. This has six in it. So everything we're putting in here is completely different from your product. Stir it up real good. There we go. Look at the color we got. There you go. Now you're going to add your silver in. Silver, it doesn't make a difference. You really don't have to measure. But if you want to measure it, uh, let's see. But you really don't have to. I mean, pretty much. But let's just make this so you guys will know. Let's just take this out here. It doesn't make a difference at all. Put you guys here. Trying to get you guys between my legs. That doesn't sound right, but the stand I'm trying to get between my legs. All right, see right here? Silver. All right, you can put two in there if you want. You can put three, all right? We're going to put three in there. That's all we're going to do. You put three of them in there. So we'll put down three tablespoons of silver. And you, you know what? Just, just put it all in there. Let's just put in four. All right, we're going to put one in there. We're going to put four, okay? Right, so we got four. Four tablespoons of silver, six tablespoons of white. Let me write that down. <laughs> I should know this by heart, but I make so many paints, it's not even funny. You see me lose remote controls. You really want to go down that road with me today? All right, then. All right, let me see. So, basic, as we said before, you could do this with a quart of white. Just get a quart of white, like that. And you want to put in uh, six uh, tablespoons of um we did it white see that fast white 
and we put in a four of the silver. My handwriting is really, really bad. Trust me, I could have been a doctor. All right, so that's all we're going to put in right there. Let's stir this up. As I told you before, you're not going to see it. It's going to, it's going to be covered up with the paint that is white and the paint that's black. You're not going to see it. All right, now, put your glitter right here. You don't want to put a lot in. This is all you're going to need is one of these or one of these. So this is going to be on this one. This may be too much. This one right here, you're going to put in probably, let me see, one teaspoon, one fourth of a teaspoon. So we're going to put here. I'm sure about that. One fourth of a teaspoon spoon of gold. I'll write this down so you can understand a little better. All right, there we go. You know, I write all my ingredients like that and no one can read this, but except for me, I'm the only one that can read this crap. Do you know how I write? I write lowercase, uppercase, cursive, and print all at the same time, and it's sloppy. A lot of you not. I'm the only one that can read my own handwriting. So when I write ingredients down, someone ever got a hold of my green book, they couldn't tell what the freak they were looking at because how I write my stuff. And then I write sloppy. This is literally how I write. So I've had people that I wrote ingredients down for, they were like, what the freak is this? Like, yeah, you see, you know, why? how are you writing lowercase, uppercase, and curse up and print all at the same time? That's just how I write. And then I write sloppy. I mean, that's how I write it. I just scribble it in. Sometimes I just mark it in, abbreviate it, done. But I can understand what it is. All right, so we're all stirred up there, as you can see. That's done. All right. Now this, you can experiment. All right. You can experiment with what we gave you here. You can add, you don't have to add in uh, six. You can add in maybe seven. You can add in maybe eight. It's up to you. It's designed to experiment. You may want to add in more silver. It's up to you. Do not add in more glitter because the glitter will give you that sparkle Christmas tree effect. You don't want that. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of glitter right here. I'm going to, I'm going to joke with you. Can I have some fun in the morning, people? Relax. Put that right there. Now this, you will see. You don't want to put too much of it in. You put too much of that glitter in. I want too much of it. Some people want to make it so you can still see it. And we got one in there, see how one is? We're gonna mess it up, we'll put two in there. We, sometimes you can try a little bit more. Well, I'm not gonna tell you how much we put another one in. Well, yeah, we'll show you how we're doing it directly, right? There we go. Right. Now, just in case, if you want a little boop, a little more jump to it, me, I don't like to jump. All right, so we'll put in two instead. So that's one right there. We'll cross that and put two. So that's two of those right there. So you're good. There we go. Now you can get the glitter from anywhere. You can get it from a hobby shop, whatever you want to get it from. They got it over there. They got it sometimes. What's this place I used to call? I used to go there all the time and buy fabric for stuff for screens. I forget what it was called, but they make it over there too. You can get it over there. There we go. That's better. You don't want too much in there. All right. All right, and we're done. That's it. We're all finished up. We're all done. I'll put the ingredients down there for you. We're going to roll this on the screen. We're going to paint this right now. That's why we got the ruler here. So let's get the paint right. Right. All right. So what we're going to do is want to take down my screen because I don't want this on my black screen. This is our screen we have for a customer. I don't want to mess the screen up. We're going to paint our screen right here. we to set it up and be done. right up front from the door because in the next couple of days we're going to be doing some demonstrations on gray screen paints versus uh white paint versus white white screens and our black technology 
we want to make sure that everybody knows that we are, when I keep my word, when I say we're not going to make any more of this product, at the end of the day, I can just go downstairs and just make his stuff and just basically just use it as my own work. But we're not going to do that. I keep my word. So it's going to stay exactly where it's going to stay downstairs in the basement. And it showed you our history under our digital crystal screen paint. We were making this stuff way before we got into black technology. How far our black technology goes back and how far we've been developing it. Beta testers have displayed our product. And also, too, for my friend Hector, thank you so much for the video demonstrations and support. I have made you actually part of our introduction screen. When you come on, you'll be to see my customer's black uh, Phoenix uh, 19 on display. Fully lit environment. Actually, he just finished painting the screen. So you can check that out for yourself. All right. So... We don't have any problems with somebody screaming and yelling on camera telling, oh, that's my product out there. No, that's our product out there, not yours. All right. Because we're going to do a lot of testing on these screens. And also, there'll be some regular bare silver screens. A few people have actually painted bare silver screen as projection screens for outside, too. All right, let's get this screen out of the way and get this set up so we can get this started, okay? Um, at that time, like I said, I had a 2011 motherboard with around 264 gigs of PC 3000 OC. I had two uh, um, um, Tesla uh, video cards. Uh, they weren't 24 gigs a piece, very quite whopping. And I was running a motherboard that had four 12 core processors with a customized liquid PCU, a liquid cooling system. It was all a copper pipe system that I designed myself. Actually, I had a use because between the graphic cards and between uh, the um, the uh, CPU, which would eat tons of memory, I mean, tons of power, I had to get something called an ATX Y adapter. They didn't make them then. You had to solder and make those yourself. So I was running two power supplies into one motherboard in order to sustain the system I had. A 2011 is a server board. So I was using that to host games online. And at the time, I had two Sony 42s set up to show that split display, but you would still have that line in the middle from the screen. But anyway, I uh, went over to my friend's house. He was talking about, yeah, you know, I just finished building my, I just finished building my PC. And he had a console over there. I was like, he was talking about his console system. I was like, let me go check out his console. So I go over to go check out his console system. And all I see is I come up with this big, huge screen. And the guy from Gears of War, we're like, what the freak is that? And that's how I got introduced to it. Because well, at that time, when I was looking at, last time I saw a projector, it was Magnavox. It was sharp. It was C, C, T, C, uh. CRTs, that's what they were, CRTs. And they were huge, massive, and BMC cables on the back and all that crap. So I was like, ugh, I don't want this crap. So anyway, yeah, he showed me the one he had, which was about the size of a Captain Crunch box, and he was showing all the peripherals in the back of it. And I was like, man, I, I gotta have one of these. I don't want that big screen experience. So um, I went and sold my two 42-inch TVs, one on eBay, one to a friend of mine was the game around the corner. He bought my screen. And I went out and got my, I was talking to my boy, I was like, so what is Lumens? I was he was teaching me, uh, what does he mean by 600 by 800 res? So much, so much, so he was teaching me all this stuff, you know, but about in, the projector moving in and out. I didn't know anything about ultra short throw projectors or short throw projectors at that time, nothing. All I knew was long throw. So my first projector was a BenQ MS500, 600 by 800 res, 720p. That's what I started off with. Got home, set it up, put my graphic card, plugged everything into the back of it. And when it came on, it was on a white wall, it was like, Ugh. mind you, I just came off two 1080p Sony monitors. So, mind you, I was hitting a white wall. 
So I went back to him. I said, yo, it looks like crap. He said, oh, you got to have a gray screen. Because then I said, there's no black screens at the time. You got to have a gray screen. So I went to go check out what it cost for his screen. It was three grand. Not going to happen. Um, so I ended up uh, uh, talking to him a few times. I said, well, what else is out there? He said, well, it's a company called Goose Screen. You go with them. But Goose Screen was crazy expensive, man. Like $600. Um, Six hundred dollars and six hundred dollars um uh court. I was like, nope, can't deal with that. I can't do that. I said anything else. He said, well, they got something called YouTube Paint. A lot of people make it. Now, mind you, I was late on the YouTube Paint. So YouTube Paint has been out a long time ago. So when I went out to Home Depot to go pick up these products, um, the guy came back and told me that two of the products weren't being made anymore because it was an incident involving something about cancer. So some crap went over, got discontinued. So I'm thinking like, oh my goodness, I'm not going back home to that white wall. Knowing that I was, I'm displaying these massive crazy graphic cards, I do not want to see this crap coming home. So then I pray on it. I pray and ask the Lord to direct me where I needed to go to buy what I had to get to do this. And there's, that's the ingredients right there that I got that day in that store. That's what I got. But except for the silver with Martha Stewart at the time of her Metallica collections. That's what it was. Went home, painted it. Mind you, like I said, this is like many years back, so things are different. Hit the wall, blew up the colors, everything popped out. And, and my friend pops in the room. He goes, you should sell that. And here we are. That's how it started. And ever since then, from that day on, anytime the ingredients or idea or whatever I wanted would pop into my head. And my Lord would show me how to build it, how to design it, how to put it together. And every time, every time I would upgrade, upgrade, the formula would change, the base would change, the design would change, everything would change. And now we got this technology we're developing that has nothing to do with paints or white paints, none of that stuff. Because there's another layer of it to it. It's understanding the physics of light. Once you understand the physics of light and how it reacts to the projector and how it reacts to the screen, well, it just comes together. It's quite so neatly. Yeah. So that's how it all started, people. Ugh. I started off when I had my company, when I first started, I didn't know how to price my products. So I used to sell a gallon of paint for, a gallon of paint for one for $75 and a quart one for $50 when I first started off. Didn't know the value of my product. And I wasn't making any money. I wasn't making any money at all. That's how I know these things. I wasn't making any money at all. My mother said that I was talking to her. I said, well, yeah, I'm working hard, but I'm not making any money. I'm not seeing any revenue. She said, well, how much are you charging for your product? I said, so and so and so. He said, well, how much do you think it's worth? You got to charge for what your product is worth. Find out what your product is worth. And I went out and I started selling it for around, it went from $150, something like, something like $150 or $160 a gallon. And it went to something like almost near like $75 or $90. People went in and bought it. Then I was testing a little bit more. We started developing something else better than that. What I could get for that. I was making somewhere between uh, almost $200 uh, a gallon and somewhere between almost close to, about, close to about 120 a quart. And we kept it at that. And then we came up with something darker. We came to the, the darker technology. And I said, let me see what would happen. I just did it out of curiosity. I put down $900. I didn't think anybody was gonna buy it. I came to check my PayPal account. I had a couple thousand dollars sitting in the account. About five people were ordering them left and right because it was a black screen. Unheard of. And that's what I realized what my technology was worth. And that's without testing against certified screens. I didn't have an ultra short though projector at the time. Or anything I was doing was I was doing demonstrations like testing my screens out in fully lit environments, using really cheap projectors, a lot of 720p projectors, stuff like that. And when people were seeing my technology was reacting in a fully lit environment, not fully lit, it wasn't like this. But with these cheap projectors I was using, um, they they started buying. And that's how I got the contract. And once I got the contract, that blew up. And people knew, oh, they got, they got contracted? A company came and gave them a 10-year contract. Yeah, we got a 10-year contract. Boom, even more sales came through. Yep. That's the ring. Now, I can credit Jamie to one thing about my company. Jamie, I can credit to him, is the fact that if it wasn't for the fact of him basically naysaying my stuff so much, I wouldn't have pushed so hard to make my product the best that it is by basically doing demonstrations that nobody else was doing. 
just like the same way when Diamond came in and I saw their technology against my screen, I said, like, good gracious, you got to be freaking kidding me. This stuff actually works. Yeah, push me to work even harder to develop a technology that was not only, I said, when I said to my buddy June, I said, look, I'm going to make a product that's not gray. I'm going to make it black. Charge made me do better. I'm the kind of person, if you tell me I can't do something, I will go out and do it. Get it done. And then have the evidence to back it up. So by somebody telling me that, oh, this so-and-so and so, that made me push hard to do more restrictor tests. When I started getting up here, I'm not here, but really like more like the black screen is pretty cool. But I think right around the time we started getting into crazy testing is when we started doing like a lot of lamps in front of the screens and stuff like that, taping thousand bar lights to the screen, stuff like that, doing demonstrations outside, stuff like that. I don't, I don't back down from that kind of stuff. No, 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 no. All right, we got our product back here. That's what we got. This is the digital one crystal screen paint, the first and only of its kind that we developed many, many years ago. I thought one day I would, I would never give this information out. Never. You know, my family members don't even know. I'm the only one that knows what's in my formulas. Nobody knows. Not ex-girlfriends, nobody knows. You keep that between you and God. That's why when I had my basement, my basement was off limits to anybody. You weren't allowed in that basement at all. I had locks on my basement. Nobody. So nobody knows what's in my stuff except for me and God. You're not getting it from me. You're definitely getting it from God. All right, this is going on. Let's grab a sand surface. Here. Right here. Uh, let's see, what are you running into here? PS4. All right, we can take the PS4 off right now. We'll set the control up again. Say, okay, so I'm about to just plan. I'm changing the fire stick. The fire stick is going to this thing right here. All right, um, screen's going to get a little weird because I'm having problems with this particular um, adapter. Well, yeah, it's good. Let me get this over here real quick. We gotta paint this in for this. You wanna see something cool real quick? I'll show you something. Now remember I told you about that invisible technology that has sun killer in it? I want you to look at the screen there, right? Look at it very carefully. Those are my window blinds pulled up all the way up on that side. Right here where the screen's at. I'm gonna come over because I don't want my neighbors to think I'm recording them. See that? With the overhead lights on. That technology is designed to filter light. So you can have light pushing through a window and hit that screen from the back and that screen would still filter light at the same time as the projector's pushing through the other side. These are demonstrations that I tell you that when people do the demonstrations can't do correctly. Here we are at 190 review and angle, moving taco silver toys to one section. At 190 review and angle, you can see my screen crystal clear at the same time this window light pushing right through at the same time while we got the overhead lights pushing like this way and the projector sitting that way. That's the advancement of the invisible technology we developed. Now, as you can see, there's light pushing through it because you can see my banners just gnaw it's up in the back. There we go. See? Got to be the back yourself up, man. When I watch demonstrations and I see people showing off their screens, the first thing they'll do is they'll have it on a table somewhere way away from when the window. There's no light filtering back and forth between the screen. That's why we do the demonstrations outside because this would be physical light pushing back and forth between that screen. So when I watch demonstration, somebody got a square little screen sitting on their table and there's no light physically contacting with the screen, there's something wrong there. That's what you call cutting corners. No, you're supposed to have physical light coming through that screen. Because this stuff is designed to be put on windows for advertisement. So window for advertisement is going to have light inside the environment pushing through. At the same time, it's going to have light pushing through it on the other end from outside. And there's Mr. Sun popping up, as you can see. Doo -doo -doo -doo. 
Ain't that right? That's how we do it over here. We do it right. I'm going to get you a lab coat next. I'm buying you a lab coat. <laughs> Buy you a lab coat. I don't know about the hairnet. I don't know how that's going to work, Taco. See, that's I got to do that demonstration for Facebook today now. I keep forgetting how crazy this stuff is. Okay, let's get this started. All right. Not sure about the day, people. Just showing you. And we're gonna do a demonstration on that. I might put a challenge. That's it. The stuff you do on a regular basis could be a challenge. All that. All right. So here we go. This is the screen we're gonna paint over top of right there. I'm not even gonna do a half and half, people. I told you I wasn't gonna bother with it. I'm not gonna do a half and half. For size, we got five gallons of a downstairs and I'm gonna make a difference. All right, just because I paint over it doesn't mean I can't make it again. Again, it's in my head. Can't, that's not going anywhere. We used to make it, I told you. It's the same thing, but it's a little different. Now, like I said, it's the same thing. Depending on how much black you put on into it controls the shade. That's it, that's all it does. So all that black does controls the shade. If you make a version of it that it's a reverse, that's sorry, I'm trying to get a somewhere to position ten. If you make a, a one that's a reverse, like black starting off first, it's the same thing. It's all the same thing. Only thing the shade does is control how dark or the shade of the paint. That's all it does. But the same thing with the same glitter I put in, the same thing with the silver I put in, all remains the same. Now, if you want to experiment, put a little bit more beach in, that's your thing. But keep in mind, as I said at the end of the day, that when you make this stuff, I'm not responsible for you messing up your screen at the end of the day. Again, we don't make this stuff anymore. It's obsolete. We're using this paint. I'm showing you this demonstration now because when we start doing the demonstrations of using this paint to show you why you do not want to use this stuff, that's what it's being used for. I'm showing you the demonstrations that we don't have any problems in between with this other individual thing. He owns the rights to all gray screen paints. There we go. So let's get this cracking, Jackson. Let's get it cracking, Jackson. Let me go over and check for a second. Yep. Yeah. Right now, you put the blinds all the way up. You can see the room. He had a camera. I was like, that right, Mr. Bird? Did you have a camera on you? No, I had a camera on me for demonstration. He was looking into our window. How dare he? All right, let me go grab this thing real quick. Here we go. I'm Danny, staring to our window, such like so, Mr. Bud, Mr. Bud. Every day, nap roller, you don't want to go with, ah, you don't want to go with the, um, a, uh, what's the word for it? I don't go with foam rollers. So foam rollers are present in the, the day, but basically jack your stuff up. Make sure we got this stirred up nice. And we're going to call this digital one. This is the digital one crystal screen paint. This is the first one we developed, the first one we started making. Later on, I had one called um, something called uh, Ice Something 2.9 HD. There were a couple other ones we made. Sky Blue. There's one called Sky Blue. And that's the part that the individual didn't understand that I have to explain to him. That because we had a screen paint maybe about six years ago called Sky Blue. The sky blue, keep in mind, you develop a technology, you're constantly, constantly, constantly working on it. It's not something you could finish and say, I'm done with it. No, you're constantly working on it, constantly improving and constantly perfecting it because you can always make it better. So when this person saw this demonstration back ahead of sky blue, he said, oh, he's just reselling the same thing. No, you don't understand anything. Again, the sky blue we developed was a very light color, almost near whitish kind of bluish look to it. The blue we have now is dark. Oh, goodness. It's an ongoing explaining to a five-year-old. All right, so there's our product right there. We're pulling out right now. Now, depending on your base, this is what we're using right now is Sherman Williams. It's the cheapest one you can get. If you want a thicker base, something that's going to have a better coverage, I would suggest go with a Bear 1050 because that's what we use. Bear, bear 1050 had automatically primer, primer put into it. It's a very thick base. It's good for covering. And it's good for a one coat application. You want to be going in over and over and over again because the paint's too thin. But this will work for now. Now 
as you can see, it's a completely different color. There you go. And you can see how I made this product compared to how I made the other product. I made the other product. Let me just do this with one hand because I don't think it's going to be. Oh, now we're going to need both hands for this jugger. Let me see. I need something to prop you guys over for something. Whoops, stay right there, please. So, yeah. And the reason why I'm saying all this is because, like I said, somebody, I'm not going to mention the guy the guy, but this particular guy on YouTube uh, made this statement about the uh, PPG. I got that wrong the first time, PPG, or PPG. So he was saying that with PPG, you can go in and you could basically uh, paint that on and it would replace any screen paint. Well, that was a complete lie because he mentioned my name and he mentioned, you know, the other person's name. I'm going to go in and defend my product. So we went and bought the PPJ. I painted it on the surface, put it against my screen. It failed in contrast, color. The white levels are a little bit higher because it's a silver paint, but our product needed to pull better contrast and color. So no, it's not the same as my product. After that, he didn't mention my name. He removed me from whatever he had on the site, and that was the end of it. When I was showing it off, all of a sudden, you know who comes popping into the channel, talking about, oh, this and blah, blah, this and blah, blah, that. I said, look. You little hot-headed nut job. If you had listened to what I said in the video, I sat there and said, me making this and spread putting on the screen has nothing to do with anybody else. It's strictly to do with me and another fellow. And that's it. Took it way out of pre-content. So that's why we have to go through all this to show you the video demonstrations, to show you the press videos, because somebody thinks they're basically the owners of all gray screen paints. That's why we got to do this. What's it called? Napoleon Complex Disorder. That's what it's called. Napoleon Complex Disorder. Alright, so let's get this done. And I still have some things to do. So I can make this 20 ways from Sunday. It's all going to react somewhat the same way at the end of the day. It's still not going to be the gig you put contrast. Still not going to give you good color, but at the time that it was in its heydays, it did a fantastic job. It made good money. We made good money off of it. And like I said, at that particular time, the requirements we have now in screen paints that are much more demanding, because now you're dealing with more advanced, high-performance projection screens. Keep in mind, when you're developing a screen paint, you're not only dealing with, you're actually, you're, one of the things you have more competition with is the certified screens. Those are the ones that you're going to have to go toe to toe with because at the end of the day, you're going to have to be to outperform these screens. So I don't care about the hobbyist, please. That's not my concern. My main concern is the certified. That's why we have so many of them to test our products against them to see how our products stack up against a screen that's going to cost a customer $5,000, $6,000. Can we compete with that kind of technology? That's what I'm concerned about. When I do demonstrations. So, no. I'm not concerned about the little hobbyists. We're concerned about the high end screens. Because at the end of the day, you got people out there that can afford a whopping $3,000 for a screen with no problem. You have to convince them at the end of the day why your product is better than that $3,000 projection screen that pretty much has corporation, company, CEOs board members and the whole nine yards, what makes you different from them? That's what you're gonna have to do. All right, gonna put a little bit more paint down. We're done anyway. That's what you gotta compete against. All right, and I already told you from the door, anybody making this kind of screen paint product, at the end of the day, is gonna to have to make a black screen. Because this stuff right here is obsolete. It's been obsolete since six years ago, since seven years ago, eight years and nine years ago. It's old. And I've been telling y'all that. So you can't go out there and basically slam black technology and then the next minute now you're trying to make it, now you're trying to be a part of it. Because I told y'all it's right. I'm not proving anything. Can I tell people, at the end of the day, people make black screen paints. You're not proving anything to me. I've been around before you even started. Before you even started, you even knew what a black screen was. I was there. 
So you're not proving anything to me at the end of the day. What you got to prove to me? I got black technology on every level you could possibly think of. Done it, tested, been there, had beta testers underneath the whole nine yards. What are you proving to me? Nothing. So I don't know how you're going to prove that one at the end of the day. Hmm. Can't slander something to build something at the same time. All right. So my thing is this. How are you going to continue to sell if you don't get that black technology correct? And it takes time to do it. Then that means the products that you were making, the gray products, are now going to start dropping. No one's going to want to buy them. Because, like I said, you convinced them all the while that gray products were the best. Better than black screens, they come out too dark, they don't work on venues, they don't work on 4K projectors. You said all this stuff. Now you're trying to make one. You explain that one. I don't care them, them good. All right, we got our digital one crystal screen paint. That's it. We're done. Done, done, done. Like I said, I would put no more then the glitter I showed you in there because if you put anything more, you'll get that uh, that's Christmas tree effect. You don't want that crap. Oh, my stands are up. I got one stand here at home. Or you just dragging this cat. Let me see if we need anything. We need this right here. We need this right here. Their projector is lame shit. We can just drop the projector down at all. Now, at the end of the day, I, can, I, I don't make great screen paint products because like I said, they're outdated. That's why. They were good at one point, but not anymore now. All right. Put that up right there. We're gonna have to lens shift that in there. Come on, come over here. So, I lens shift in there. And I got to pick my adapter because my adapter's coming red. All right. Taco, don't do anything stupid. I'm watching you. I am watching you right now. I want you behind the back of my screen trying to knock it over. So you're carrying your fish with you. You're doing battle with your fish. Battle with your fish! Taco. I'm getting them all hyped up anyway. I need to stop myself. If I can get this thing to sit right here, right? Right, it's good. All right, now let's bring our zoom in. We need to zoom, 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 zoom. There we go. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Black screen. That next, that next to black screen will get crushed. There we go. Uh, am I shrunk all the way in? Or am I just basically just. No, we are already in. Okay. Let's get this back to where it was. And let's get the. Am I there? Or am I basically going to cut us off again? Oh, there it is. There we go. Cut us back in again. Oh, cut us off. Back in, comes back off. There you're mine. There we go. Now we're good. Okay, so let's get the lens shift done.
So that was digital. Oh, okay, so I'm sorry about that. That's digital white crystal screen paint. I'll show you contrast everything. Everything's chill there. There's the same thing I call the screen paint pot says can't tell us anything special when it comes to contrast. This is drying. I'm going to go put my stuff up and up here.
There you go. I'll draw it in done. There it is. Well, look way over in there. All right, check, check in up my area back there behind me. No matter what you blend that stuff with, it's all going to come out the same way. Contrast level is going to fail, color is going to fail because we're going to put this against a phantom. So I'm going to put my digital pixel screen paint way back next to phantom technology. We have the ingredients for you guys. I'll post this below so you can see for yourself. That's the our ingredients right there. For digital pieces of paint paint. Like I said, we don't make it anymore. There's no point to make it anymore. It is an obsolete product. Exerd. Contrast level. That's it. Contrast level. Don't pull up. Let me see if this is all dry. I don't want to take my screen. Contrast, put some colors on it, and better job picking up color. So as I told you before, that all gray screen paint products, unless they're basically darker than the gray screen paint products, all start up the same way. Every last one of the bases start the same way. Black and white paint. Every last one of them. And if it's bare surface screen, you've seen the color bare surface screen, it looks near white. It has a little bit of taint to it, but it's not silver. But again, black and white. It's a bare 1050 regular gold white. It all starts off the same way. That's why when you've seen that little bit of paint that I put in, that one quart of paint I put in to make all those products, even my own. There's no way in the world you would need a gallon of that. That's perfectly possible. You just need a quart. That's all. A quart is more than enough. We need to do it. All right. This is done. Closer, here you go. Now right there, you honestly believe that you're seeing black levels right here. Let me show you. I thought I was seeing black levels, but you're not. They're actually gray. 
You would swear up and down that that was black. That's not black. That's actually gray. Like I said, I'm not going to take this product out and compare it to it. As I said before, I leave this stuff alone, and all we need is our digital or crystal screen paints. This is what we're going to use at any time you see me, unless he does something stupid and then it's all back on again. But any time you see me displaying a gray screen from here on in, this is our product, digital or crystal screen paint. Not even using 4K or 720p, just like back in the old days. If you hear me talk like this, I'm talking to this individual and the naysayers. Again, as I said, I was making this product way before you ever knew I ever existed. Before I ever knew you existed, I was making great products. I know exactly what to put in them, how to alter them, how to design them, everything. I've made so many brands of gray screen paints, it's not even funny. my channel you want to talk trash about my black technology keep in mind six years ago i was developing black technology you've never even seen before how can you criticize somebody you know nothing about got on that time stamp to back it up my gray screen print product was sitting up in europe even though they did me wrong but it was sitting up in europe and i was making some serious good money until they basically decided to try to steal it from me but i had contracts and everything people from all over were checking out my stuff my paint was showing up in all different forms of places. And the rest of them, you have to figure out how they were made. I'm just showing you the, the, how to do it in the beginning. Will I use this up now? Oh, heck no. It's old. My technology would destroy this. What you're going to see, because that's what we're going to be using it for. We're going to be using it as an example paint. Why not to use it? When we take it outside and we show a star for demonstration, when we display color off of it, can't pass any of the tests we can put black screens under. It's obsolete. It's old. Dinosaur paint. That's what it is now. It's a blessing. And right now, the blessing is upgraded to black technology. As I told you before, at the end of the day, I told you before this guy ever thought about making a black product, I told you he has no choice. The gray screen print products are old and outdated. You have no choice but to make a black screen. Black technology is the future. Not this stuff. Anybody can make this stuff. Anybody, 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 anybody. That's it. Anybody can make it. Try 
right there, you think you're seeing black? Nope, not even close. That's not even black. That's not black. All right, you can get the screen in here so I can show you what you're getting. At the end of the day, I don't want somebody painting this on the wall and then coming back at me in the email talking about, hey, you messed my screen up. I can't get this one. No, 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 no. I told y'all at the door, this your, at your own risk if you make this stuff. At the, again, at your own risk. We don't support it. We don't make it anymore. There's a reason why. That's at your own risk. You put this stuff in your wall, and there you go. There's no difference from his product. Well, actually, ours is made different, but again, it's all the same. Put silver and put silver into it. It's still all the same. So we're gonna react you all the same way. Now I told you before that if you drop silver in it, silver doesn't change anything. You saw me drop four tablespoons of sugar, I'm sorry, sugar, sugar, silver into that paint. You see it change? No, it remained the same. I told you. The only thing you're gonna see is the glitter. That's it. But at that particular time, we really thought the silver was actually worth it. My dad, they're rejected my dad for right now. demonstrations. go over to audio. 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 My second audio. Alright, I'm there. Alright, cool. Alright, cool. 4K demonstrations. Getting 
Okay. Maybe we go over. Torch. That's why we don't use it anymore. It's obsolete. White screen. Let's see, it's going to pull all white, all silver screen, sorry, all gray screens will always pull a higher white level. But like I said, a white level is not a good thing because that means you cannot maintain contrast and color. Blue screen. There you go. That's why I tell people, when someone displays a white level, that's not a good sign. That's an extremely bad sign. That means at the end of the day, you will have to calibrate and be stuck in a dark environment, and contrast is not even going to come up at all, period. Can't produce it. You work like a white screen. White screens are like that. White screens can't produce contrast or color. They can only produce high white levels. See? Purple screen. Think about a black screen. Black screen has to be able to maintain a high enough white level where the image doesn't come up too dark where you can't see the screen. Much like when we do our demonstrations, we do black paint versus our technology. When you do a black paint test, two things are required in a black paint test. And I'm going to say this again because some people don't get it. A black paint test, when you hold up both containers, black paint and your product, when you put them side by side, they have to match. They have to look exactly the same. That way they know that one product's not actually gray and one product is actually black. The next thing you're going to have to do is when you paint those screens in, you're going to have to show a difference between one or the other. That's what's going to have to happen. See? Green screen. So you're going to have to show that when you have those two in front of you, Something's going to have to change. With our technology, we paint it. Even though both screens look black, one drives lighter than the other. And one can pick up a higher white level. And that's not just with paint. It picks up a higher white level with black fabric, black vinyl. Anything you lay against that screen, it's going to pick up a higher white level. Uh, let's go with, um, let's see. We do red already. Red screen. See? Obsolete. That's why I told you. All the screen paints that we tested, and we've done these tests already before, when we were testing them, they did the exact same thing. They're obsolete products. That's why I sit there and told you I made a whole new different screen paint, put something completely different in it. We put silver in it. We put gold in it. That's a digital crystal screen paint product. Different from the other product, all react the same way. They have that same issue. They can't seem to pick up the color and they can't seem to pick up contrast. The white levels are too high. The problem with gunmetal screens, they can't match a black screen. A black screen's black. How is a gray screen going to match a black screen And when it comes to contrast? Not going to happen. I think the last time I checked, when looking at outer space, it wasn't gray, it was black. 
yellow screen. That's why I told you at the end of the day, black technology is more superior. And at the end of the day, those who are convinced that a gray screen is the best way to go will change their tune and they will basically start making black screens because they have no choice. They know that I'm right. Gray screen. She's laid on that one, isn't she? So we've got three gray screens here. We have a dark gray, and we have a light gray, and a mid gray. The screen is actually gray. So which pulls up the better gray? The black screen or the gray screen? Dark gray. And if you think you're just seeing my black screen, you're not because I'll cover my projector. So you can see my screen is black. It's gray. It's black. It's gray. See? Can't read it. Our screens can read it, and they're black. Let's go with the uh, gray screen. Our screen's going gray. That's not the color, that's light gray. That's the gray right there. We go over and we switch out. You will see it's the exact same color being displayed on the YouTube channel. Let's go over to the, what's this called, uh, pure gray. Gray screen stupidly. That's not gray, that's gray. That's the gray we requested off the YouTube. So here you got a screen that's actually literally gray that can't see gray. Dark gray. There's dark gray again. We'll cover our projector up. Black, gray. Black, gray. We ran all these tests through his products. We're running the test through my product. And I told you, obsolete. It's an old product. Let's see, what do you want to go with next? Orange screen. There's an orange screen right here. Not even picking up. This is why you're told to calibrate your projector. This is why you're told to be in ambulate controlled environments. The darker the environment, the better chance you have of picking up a better color. Not gonna happen. Let's go with the uh, orange red. See if we get any luck on this one. Yeah, got a commercial. There we go. Now, if I already covered this up with a white sheet or a white blanket or a white projection screen, this would come up as the best color. We've done that demonstration too. But that's why I tell people at the end of the day, you know, I'm not saying you're colorblind, but you're not seeing your colors correctly. That's all to it. So we've done that demonstration. We covered it up. That screen, so what color is that screen? We went on Facebook with this. They go, well, that's a blue screen right there. I said, no, it's not blue. It's washed out. Pulled it back and they saw this solid color. You're not really getting what you think you're getting out of your projector. Whether we make our own screen paint, it's not going to match. Whether we make somebody else's screen paint, it's not going to match. I showed you different combinations, how we did it. It does not work. It's old. It's an old technology. Back then, seven years ago, six years ago, this stuff would have been the rage. Now, no. Uh, let's go pick ourselves another color. Uh, let's go with a, um, let me see. Neon pink. Getting that See? Not coming up. There's the color being displayed on the channel right there. Let's go over and see if we can. Let's do a slow color change out. That's why we can give you the ingredients for free. It's obsolete. And on the other product, we made with black and white paint. We used a tutorial video to do it. This is my tutorial video showing you how to make our gray, our gray and black products. Several in ours, we put in tablespoon, put in them to remember it's offhand. I should remember it's offhand. All right, so we put a quarter white in there. We put six tablespoons of black. We put four tablespoons of silver. It really doesn't make a difference, PPJ or the other ones, just as long as it's silver. And we put uh, one, one fourth of or two one fourth of a teaspoon of glitter when people see us make this something oh man that's just ingredients right there for digital man i'm gonna paint this i mean you don't want to do that i sat there and told you you don't want to do it 
Because if I show you how to make it, right, and I don't show you the results of what's going to happen, you paint that on your wall. Even though I give you a disclaimer, you're really going to think that's going to work. And I'm like, no, that's not going to work. It's old. Now we put our screen up against it to show you why we don't make it anymore. Why we're giving the ingredients for free. It is worthless. That's why we did the demonstrations when we did his products. Did the exact same demonstration. So we won't go farther with that one. We did the demonstration. We had them all side by side. We showed they all blended in together perfectly. We showed they had the same reaction to black screens. They couldn't pull colors. They couldn't pull contrast. They couldn't pull this. They couldn't pull that. We showed you all that. Now I take my own product and I'll show you out of my own product how to make it. And I'll show you this exact same thing. It's an old product. So at the end of the day, when you see somebody struggling to try to make a blacker screen, this is coming from, keep in mind, not from us, because on my end, the only thing I'm going to tell you about when it comes to light gray screens, like I said, they were good at that particular time. Nothing was bad about them at that particular time. They did the colors. They did everything they were supposed to do. But this is a new era now. They're old. They're outdated. Anyone trying to sit there and tell you that, oh, black screens are garbage. Black screens are trash. Black screens don't work with 4K projectors. Black screens don't work with venue projectors. Black screens don't pull proper white levels and all this nonsense. They want to slander black screens. And now look at them. Working hard to try to make a black screen. Welcome aboard. Told you so. So now you're going to have to do all the tests that we do under black screens now. Because I can see through all that because I developed black technology. Been doing it since uh, 06. Let's keep going. Let's see if we can pull out a contrast level. Starfield screensaver. Tests on black screens are much more difficult than on white screens. When those DIY fixes don't go as planned, we're here to get you on the bed. People are not going to buy from someone who just started. They're going to buy from somebody who has time in developing the technology. That's why we put the challenge out there. The challenge we put out there is basically a simple challenge and test. If your product does what it's supposed to do, then having both liquids side by side, they should both produce the same black in both containers. And one of the tests, you have to be to produce a higher white level than the surface that you're testing against. The surface that you're testing against has to be the same color because they don't want you doing the test against a gray screen. They want you doing the test against a white screen. You have to do that test first so you can show that those two liquids are exactly the same. What's the difference between your product and another black paint? They most, most, both must match. What I saw in the demonstration that's on my thumbnail, one screen was black, one screen was gray, and one screen was light gray. So, nope, that's not a fair test. Both gotta be black. That's how it works, that's how it works. Taku, taku, kitty, taku. It's time for your um, treats, taco. Taco bear. Taco bear, it's time for your treats. We got the star field. Sorry, coming up on that thing. Let's try the OLED horse. Panasonic 4K demonstration. Man, we need that one on and we do the other one. Make my fan out of here too. Go in the streets. So that's what I told you from the door. I told y'all this stuff all from the door. I'm not trying to be rude, but I told y'all from the store, from the, right from the door. Whether it be our product or somebody else's product, gray screen paints are obsolete. The future is black technology. 
And anybody who basically is going to deny that will end up pretty much trying to make it. I told y'all that it was going to happen. I gotta go back and find those videos and repost them. But it's not going to be that easy. It's not going to be easy by painting the screen and doing the demo. As we saw that already. That screen was gray. You had to delete the video. You still got to do the test. Because at the end of the day, no one's going to buy from you. They're going to buy from us. Because we make the best black technology. We have tested back everything up on our products. You're going to have to be able to pass all those tests we did. All those tests are going to have to be live, certified, and no cookie cutter screens. This screen has to be displayed on a 92 or larger. Matter of fact, your next screen, matter of fact, the two screens you should have in your arsenal is anywhere from uh, 92 to uh, 150 inch. You should have, because that screen has to be displayed on 150 inch. You have to see exactly if you're going to be pulling this projector back, especially outside the distance throw, how badly the um, the um, the um, pixelations are going to have. They're going to have to expand to cover a screen that big. So is your screen going to pull off enough white light? Is it going to come up too dark? Or the pixelation is going to have issues and come fuzzy or distorted? All that stuff has to be done. Because black screens take a lot in order to be able to generate white light because they're darker. So it's interesting the person who ended up mocking the technology now is trying to make the technology and now it's figuring out that no, it's not as easy as it is. Because if it was, you would have got it on the first try and your screen wouldn't have came up gray, but it came up black. You wouldn't have deleted your video, which we have a video of you now deleting your video. Now you got to be to back that up, buddy. By the time you get done figuring out how to get that done, man, I'll be retired and done. I'll be over. I'm done. Some of my other company will be running this. But see, like I said, it's going to be harder for him, like I said, because he denied black technology. He didn't accept it. So how are you going to tell your customers that you convince them to buy a gray screen paint product, letting them know, don't buy from black paint. You don't want to be dealing with that. So and so and so. That stuff is dirty. So and so. It's an unclean product. And here you are trying to make it yourself. So how do you how do you fix that one? Good luck. But until then, you know, if you ever want to do a side-by-side -side challenge demonstration against a phantom, I, I'm more than welcome to, to take that challenge anytime. And remember what I said before I cut off from all the other stuff. I said, if you can make my product, post my ingredients. And I'll make that ingredients over here and I'll put it against my own stuff. So that shows you at the end of the day, you can't make my product. If you can't make my product, you don't understand the first thing about black technology. The fact you had to delete your video shows you don't know anything about black technology. And the fact that your screen came up gray instead of black. Ah, okay. We'll leave it at that. when I saw paint on screens. Paint on screens, I thought they had a black screen. I literally thought they had a black screen. That screen's not black. That screen's literally dark gray. That's what it is. That is not a black screen. Because if I lay it against my screen, it doesn't come up as black. It comes up as gray, which I got to call them too. Because that is not a black screen. So they have it down on their website as uh, dark gray. But they have written on the back of it black. So which one is it? But they never made any claim about the white light. They never said anything about that. They kind of denied it. They kind of said it's impossible for a black screen to be able to produce white light in a fully lit environment. Was it a dark environment? It was a dark environment. It was a dark environment. Which I would think it'd be the fully lit environment would have the issue. Let's let that one play. comes to the fans of technology being a black screen we're still hunting down black products to match that screen and this has nothing to do with with this that, and the other it simply has us basically wanting to see if we have the best black screen on the market that's why i made a request to a certain company which shows not to acknowledge 
and that's why we called another company who chose not to test against the black phantom so if there are people making screen paints out there that are black we want to test you against black phantom side by side because that's the one for us I said in the demonstration at 10% done, I want to be able to have my screen tested against about as many uh, certified screens as we could. And including black paints. So, anyone out there making black paint, let us know. Send me an email and we'll do a side-by-side -side demonstration next to Phantom. Are we going to look at her over here? And that includes contrast and white levels. So that's what we're putting out there. We already did certified screens. I did every certified screen I could get my hands on. You know, you saw me on basically on my computer hunting down to try to find certified screens to match the black technology. So now we're going after screen paints. So if you feel your product is that good, anybody, I mean anybody, feel your product is that good, we would like to test you next to Phantom. great screen paint product as I told you before that nope at the end of the day it's not going to be to perform well our screens can produce the most high white levels let me see 4k snow screen savers Starting this stuff again, man. Really, seriously, then it's too early for this. So, as you can see, yes, it's going to pull a higher white level, but is our screen going to become so dark you can't see it? Nah, that's the only thing that the screen paint can do is pull a higher white level. That's it. Contrasting colors not going to even register. Our screen can register white levels. So there's black paint sitting next to our screen. I'll show you the difference between our technology and black paint. I'll show you our white levels next to it uh, to the uh, digital one crystal screen paint. cannot express this enough I'm sorry but I got to bring this up please stop testing your product against gray paint you're supposed to do that test against a white screen doing your test wrong white screen you can't test white levels against a gray screen because a gray screen is automatically going to pull a low white level you got to test it against a white screen 
That's why we do the whole demonstration with white screen, black screen, white screen, black screen, white screen. There you go. That's what you got to do. Four K snow demonstration. Lesson if you learn, people. Anytime we're going to do some demonstrations on how to properly test black technology. We'll get that back up there. We gotta put this up here first. We gotta, we gotta do that demonstration because, like I said, I don't like it when people don't do tests properly. Got it. Anytime you test a white, a black screen on any kind of white levels on the black side, it must always be done against a white screen, not a gray screen. Why not a gray screen? Because the gray screen is going to produce a lower white level. You want to go with the surface that's going to produce the highest white level against your blackest screen. That's how the demonstration should be done. If you're going to be comparing a black screen, do not compare it against your own gray screen paint. Right here, just to simply just to show you at the end of the day, that this product is obsolete. You're supposed to compare it against certified screens. If you're going to call your product the best, then it has to go against the best, which means you have to go against elite screens and daylight screens and see more AV and so on and so on and so on, which means you have to be over 18 to beat us. 
you're going to have to be somewhere between five to four certified screens ultra short throw and this includes color pattern tests white tests contrast tests these tests also include long distance tests a thousand lumens at 22 feet you must basically prove that your screen can show a proper color pattern compared to being 22 feet back and a lux meter must be displayed Phantom's technology was able to do at least 22 feet with the meter reading at 416 in one room and 262 in another room. Still hitting the screen, maintaining proper color, maintaining proper white levels, and maintaining contrast levels by being tested by four of the top certified screens we had in our kitchen drawer. That's what you have to be able to pass to beat the Phantom. And then outside, well, that's a whole nother ball game for that technology. That screen can hit at 14 feet and can produce a snowstorm outside without a problem and hit that at a 190 degree viewing angle. So as I said before, we're hunting black screens. I've already tested just about everything else. We need a black screen to go against the Phantom. And if you have one, then guess what? You're going against this bad boy. And that's again, it's not just him. I don't care who you are. We need to have this. I want this screen to have the ability to be able to beat anything we throw at it. So if your paint has any black paint in it whatsoever, phantoms don't have black paint in them. That's one of the secrets I'll tell you about a phantom. There's no black paint in it. The way it was engineered was pretty interesting. It doesn't even register as it. If you have an ounce of black paint anywhere in your screen, you're gonna have a problem with the screen. But then again, I said at the end of the day, it's not about the surface. You have to understand the physics of light on how it travels and how it reacts to what it touch. Light reacts differently depending on what it touches. That's why we're hunting. And if anyone cancels an order or backs down, then we automatically know from the door. Because we already have one company, which we did ask, but they don't ignored us. We know who they are. And another company we did call, had a conversation with the phone, but they avoided the question. So we know who they are. And the rest of them, well, going against this thing, if they cancel, then we know from the door. We're not keep in mind. I'm not going to push it. I'm not going to make an order. Have somebody not not going to happen. A simple cancellation is it's perfect enough for us. That's enough for us. Because there's no way in the world if a certain company tells me, nah, you know, I'm good. I'm not going to go hunt their screen down. Forget it. He already said that's the end of it. Go about my business. That's the end of it. Anytime you design something, you want the best from it. You want the best. You want to be able to develop the best of the best. That's what you want. If you're afraid to take challenges on your product, it's not worth the time. Interesting, looking at my old technology next to my new technology. If I had stayed on that path, I thought about that. If I had stayed on that path, if I had sat there and ignored what I saw in that room that day, I'd be still making that. If somebody came along and made that, there is no way in the world this could compete with that. Not ever. I gotta finish the inflatable screen. I'm gonna make a phantom inflatable screen. Oh yeah, I forgot I was making tea. I'm gonna finish watch this a little bit.
So we got three white certified screens here, 0.9, 2.0, and 2.0 white screens. Our old original Digital One Crystal Screen Paint and Phantom. Skyworth, food demonstration. Let's see if it makes our screen so black you can't see it. Hmm, interesting. So our screen can maintain its white levels with no problem. Again, if you're testing a black screen, I'm not gonna tell you again, do not test your white levels on a gray screen. They have to be done on white. Because here's the problem. If you cut corners, and you test it on a gray screen, how do you know how your levels are gonna perform when you test it against a white screen? So if someone gets a hold of your product, they bring it down and they test it on a white screen, you've never tested on the white screen. So you don't know how poor your levels are gonna come up. That's why it has to be tested on a white screen first, being the brightest level. But as I said before, since, like I said, one of the challenges we have under Phantom is the fact that we want to test Phantom against everything and anything. So that's why I'm online hunting down black screen paints. We already went through all the black screens we could possibly go. Actually, there's one company which we're going to have to try. And they look really, really good. They were really promising. So that's one company right there. But as for black paints, and the only one I found was basically a company called Paint on Screens. But... Like I said, at the end of the day, their product is basically not black. Look at that. Look at that. It looks amazing. That looks amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. It looks amazing. All right, so this right here is the sample sheet we got from a company called Paint On Screens. This is their screen right here. They actually have their sample sheets on um, uh, bricks of, uh, actually not saying sample sheets on drywall. So this is their surface right here. Now that looks black, right? Looks black. On the back of it, of the sample sheet, they have black. That's black. That's gray. That's gray. Phantoms are black. So this is not black. This is actually gray. But they think that's passable for black, but it's not. That's why I said that it's a dark gray screen. If I had this by itself over here, you would think you were looking at a black screen right now. That's not black. That's actually gray. That's how people, some, I'm saying they're doing this, but some people didn't be able to cheat in their demonstrations, but even in the demonstration, the screen still wasn't as dark as this. This screen's actually darker. So this is a very dark gray. But that's black right there. And that doesn't come up black here. And our screen here is black. I'm putting my shadow on the way so you can't see. And my screen is darker. We can blend the color with no problem. That's easy. Very easy to do for our technology to blend the color. Because our screens pull high white levels. That's why we can blend it with no problem. The only problem is when it comes to a contrast level, that screen's going to have an issue. So if we do here at the bottom, see? 
contrast map is not going to come up too well. Starfield screensaver. Getting that for Need to be concentrated on this. It's moving all the way up and around. Let's see what time we got here. We're going to wait past. Whoa. See, now in here, that's going to look good. That's going to look fantastic there. See? On this surface right here, that's going to look great. Looks black. Looks black on this surface. Looks black on this surface. Looks gray on my surface. Because our surface is producing a 100% black. Not only a 100% black, but an ultra black, which means it's actually darker than the average black. Even though it dries lighter. I want to break this. This is basically made out of drywall. See here? Here? Put it down here. Right? Now stick it against our screen. There you go. And this is the black paint. That's why we asked to do the side by side next to the black paint. That's why we asked to do next together. You can see exactly if the screen is actually black. A screen can be this dark, as I said before, that's how they fake it. A screen can be that. I'm saying they're faking it, but a screen can be that dark, and you would think that was black if you were looking at it. But if you put that against black paint, it's gray now. See? That's why we requested that. That's why when he showed the demonstration, the screen came up gray. Only thing that's going to black, uh, match another black screen together, they're both going to be black. All right, with that being said, I'm done. I'm way past my time. Um, as you can see, the Crystal Edge, I'm sorry, not the Crystal, the Digital One Crystal Screen Paint. As I told you before, I'll put the ingredients on the bottom if you're interested in making it. But also to allow you to see the difference on what we have against our product. It's just going to come out washed out. Colors are not going to pick up. Contrast levels are going to, not going to pick up. The white levels will, but at the end of the day, like I said, what's the point of having high white levels if you don't have contrast or color? So you can see exactly what you're getting. But I'll put the ingredients at the bottom for you to take, copy if you want. If you want to go down that route, uh, I think altogether, if you bought the silver, probably be about $8 because you just need a sample or you don't need a lot. I wouldn't get the bare silver screen because the bare silver screen is not silver. You need actual silver. So uh, I don't know if they got a sampler version of the PPJ, PPG, I don't know. But you would need that. Um, you would definitely need some glitter. You go to Hobby Shop. Joanne's Fabric Shop should definitely have that. You can pick it up from there. Or you can just go over to Home Depot. And pick, no, Home Depot Lowe's has it. You can pick it up from them. They got that Vassar or whatever it's called. You can get it from there. Um, and then black and white paint, you can get that anywhere you want. Um, doesn't make a difference. That's all. Enjoy. Got to go and God bless.